I'm only human. I'm only human. I'm only human. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sports Talk. Hope you guys are doing well today. Once again, I am Zach Barnett, your host. We had a special guest join us today for an interview. Let's elaborate on his football journey. He started in high school at John F. Kennedy in California. Took his talents to USC. Had several awards granted to him throughout his college career. In 1987, in the NFL Draft, my special guest was drafted in the second round, 37th overall, to the San Francisco 49ers. Among his three years in the NFL, he won two Super Bowl championships with the San Francisco 49ers in the 80s. Well, let's go on to name our special guest. He is Jeffrey Briegel. Stay tuned for the interview. Oh, uh, it sounds great. Um, it, was a, it was a journey, that's for sure. Definitely. Ups and downs. But, uh, yeah. So what got, you, what got you involved with football as a child, man? Uh, you know, my, when I first um, was coming up, I, uh, I played Pop Warner, but I was pretty heavy kid, you know, um, and I was kind of like 10 years old playing with 13 year olds. So it was kind of a weird deal. And, uh, you know, I, <laughs> it was, uh, it was different, you know, cause, cause I, I, the, all the kids were more mature, you know, I was just kind of like this baby face cop kid, you know, <laughs> overweight and big. And, but then I grew up and, um, in high school, I was starting starting over all those guys, you know, and uh, so I matured through weightlifting and working out and stuff, and uh, you know, it worked out pretty good. I mean, you know, a couple of them were already gone in high school, but the guys that were that I played with that were one or two years older than me and, and Pop Warner, um, you know, they were behind me in, in high school, so it was awesome. You know, I played both ways in high school and played nose tackle and um, and offensive tackle. Right, offensive right tackle, and uh, you know, I won the I was defensive player of the year my senior year in high school for the uh, Valley for uh, the city city um, the Valley Four A conference, and then the the city, um, and um, you know, I was recruited as a defensive lineman, but ended up being an offensive lineman at, at USC because. Yes, uh, it was a better move for me. You De- know? Definitely, man. What uh, <laughs> what and who had the most impact on you as a player and person at John F. Kennedy, your high school. What, Who had the most impact on you, man? Uh, I mean, as a player? Yes, sir. I would say um, hmm, probably guys that, you know, uh, guys that were like – because I remember going to a game when I was in fifth grade, you know, and we watched uh, – we watched, you know, we beat San Fernando. Um, and uh, – Charles Charles White, uh, and I, I got to know this guy uh, pretty pretty well. He wasn't an offensive or defensive lineman at, at all. He was he was a secondary guy. His, his name was Shelton Tryon, and uh, he chased Charlie White down and, and saved a, a touchdown and won the game for us. You know, so that kind of turned me on to uh, football and Kennedy. And you know, I knew I was going to be going there because I was in that district. Was, I went to a city school. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, back then the city schools dominated. The private thing wasn't happening then, you know. It was just they weren't as good, you know. This for whatever reason in, in California, the city city schools dominated the public schools, and that is what I mean. Definitely. And, uh, you know, the private schools were okay, but they just didn't have the talent that the uh, public schools, you know, the, <clears throat> the public schools had. And, uh so I remember that game in fifth grade, you know, being uh, watch, you know, watching Kennedy beat San Fernando, and, and the end of that whole thing. That's what got me going, you know. Definitely, man. I hear you. So, and uh, how was that transition for you, going from John F. Kennedy to USC, man? That's a pretty big jump. A D one school. I yeah. hear you. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was. Um, 
it was intense, and, you know, and I was recruited as a nose tackle and kept in on defense. And, you know, I, 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 we, we learned some stuff in high school that was like, it was, it was good, good stuff for high school. But once you got to college, it was a totally different game. They, you know, we learned, you had to learn how to read a block, you know, and, and keep an outside arm free and, and squeeze, squeeze down on, um, uh, you know, on a push and, it's just a whole different thing. It was gap gap control that we run a defense at SC that uh, were you know George, the starters that year when I came in were I think George Achika, Charles Ussery, and um, uh, a couple other guys that were really good, you know, and um, and you know they knew how to play. So when I came in, I didn't have the I didn't have the lateral movement that those guys had, you know, just. Uh, uh, I was more in high school. I was more of a uh, just a gap guy, you know, and then chase the ball carrier and that type of thing. So uh, when I they decided to move me over, and I started getting better towards the end on the opponent squad my freshman year, but I did redshirt my freshman year, and then the second year I, I started as a as a redshirt as a, as a freshman. So I started four straight years at USC, but on the offensive line. So the, yes, the switch from defense to offense made, made a heck of a lot of sense for me because it allowed me to be better, you know, better at what I, what I could do, you know. Definitely, man. So uh, what games in your mind had the most impact on you and were the most memorable to you when you played at USC? Uh, in, in college? Yes, sir. Oh heck! I'd say um, playing Alabama in the Aloha Bowl. I mean, those guys were really good. You know, they're, they're big and well coached. Uh, and then, but the big one was uh, Ohio State when we beat them in the Rose Bowl in '85. I mean, and then the three games that year we should have should have won that we didn't. It was uh, it was just really uh, sad because. We played LSU that year, and that was a big game in the Coliseum. And I mean, we just didn't uh, have it. We didn't. We didn't beat those guys, and we should have. Uh, and then UCLA and Notre Dame, we lost to, and we had problems beating those guys the whole time I was there. You know, we beat UCLA. I think my junior season, twenty to seventeen, and that was a good game. But we pretty much dominated on, on run blocking and stuff. But uh, you know, as far as the whole thing. You know, the, you know that, that one in '85 when I was a sophomore, we beat Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. Was awesome, man. We played against Keith Byers and Tom. Mike, uh, uh, was it Mike Tom Zach? And um, he's the quarterback. And uh, I played against Chris Spielman. You know, and I was pretty much uh, just pushing him around. You know, it was, I you, it was pretty fun. <laughs> he was pretty good. You know, like, he's a year older than me, and I ended up getting it on later. We were both like on all American teams together and stuff. And but uh, Ohio State was a pretty good team. We beat them. You know, so definitely, man. So uh, yeah. the, how the rules are changing now? Like the players gonna. The players are gonna start getting paid. So what on their like their, their likeness? So what's your opinion on that? Well, I, I think you, you mean you're talking about uh, on their likeness for like a video game or yeah. for uh, any any type of uh, commercial or whatever yeah. that they use them. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's uh, definitely uh, it's, it's beneficial to the guys that. Are used, but it's not for the other guys that don't get the the publicity and the uh, the hype. Um, you know, it's kind of bad for them. You know, so there's kind of a miss. Uh, I don't know what the word will be. Um, uh, it's just um, it's kind of skewed. You know. Because, uh, you know, all the star players and, and the skill position players are going to be the guys who are pretty much going get to the, get the publicity and get in those positions where they can make money, I think. But, Definitely. Uh, you know, it's a good thing overall. And, and if, if they can spread the wealth somehow, and I think they will, you know, because players are pretty good good like that with each other, you know, uh, it'll be good. And, and I know now, though, that those guys down at SC are not doing too bad, man. They, they, they. As a freshman, you get to stay in these luxury. They're, they're beautiful uh, apartments, and 
uh, it, the, you know, the the stipend is way bigger than it was when I played, and it was it, it takes care of way more. Um, Definitely, man. Allows you to buy food and everything else, and so it's changed a lot. I and mean, they've changed the rules, and the whole game has changed quite a bit. We had to start basically during the season, so we did did a lot of other stuff in, in the off season, like work and. Construction and stuff just to uh, just to make ends meet. Definitely, you know? definitely, man. At USC, <laughs> what was your favorite team bonding moment, man? Um, well, I, I think uh, you know it's it's it's, it's crazy. Uh, again, Ohio State before before we played those guys in the Rose Bowl. Check this out: we uh, the guys that were um, captive, the captive and. Um, I think it was Iran. Uh, I think remember it was in the. Um, it was a few years before that, but they, they uh, the Ayatollah, Ayatollah Khomeini, I think it was, uh, had those guys cap- captive, and uh, there like there were twelve American captives that uh, that finally got released. Yes, sir. And then uh, they came in, they came into our locker room and uh, we got to meet those guys before the game. So that was pretty exciting, you know. And uh and then a couple times uh you know John McKay came in and talked and you know Robinson was my coach the first year. Yes, sir. Uh but then, then he moved on to the Rams and then Tom, Ted, uh, coach Ted Tonger took over. Uh so, you know, through the years that I was there, a few times John McKay came and spoke and, you know, got us around that. So that was pretty neat. Yes, sir. He was an old school guy, you know, but like a couple championships. Definitely, man. So let's transition to your NFL career, man. What was the most difficult part about that leap for you, that jump to the NFL from Southern Cal to the 49ers, man? Second round pick. Yeah. Yeah, Zach. I'd say, say the big, the big leap was the speed. You know, I mean, the the guy, every guy they play against is, is pretty big, and then they all have, have, they're all fast. You know, you're not playing against mediocre players; they're, they're all pretty good. You know, if if, if you're on the field as a starter, you're playing against some guys that can run and they can that are good athletes. You know, definitely, man. What was your yeah. favorite head-to-head matchup? You and a defensive player. What was your favorite matchup uh, of all time? I, I would say when we played, um, we played Philadelphia. And Philadelphia's uh, old old stadium. We played against the uh, Bear defense. With uh, and Buddy Ryan brought that over when he was uh, at the Bears. You know, he ran that Bear defense where the nose tackle uh, is covered over the center, and then you have a man over the each guard. And then and um, on the end uh, in a six technique on on both tackles. So it was a crazy defense. They would stunt and stem and move like they pick pick. You know, one guy would like slam down on the the like Reggie White was in the middle. He was playing nose tackle. Jerome Brown was over over me, and like Reggie would like slam me, and, and then Jerome would come around and they, they would do all this twisting and stuff on that that three uh, front man front right up in front of the three inside guys and uh, that was probably about the toughest defense I've ever played against but and those guys were good you know Reggie Definitely. White Jerome Brown was a, you know I was in all America with Jerome Brown man he's a good guy man he he died in a car accident yes, of course sir. and that was uh, pretty sad man you know losing that, that guy because he was a good dude De- definitely man so uh, throughout yeah. your your NFL journey, what moments stand out to you that you say, wow, how did that happen? What moments stand out in your mind? Well, I don't know. I'd say uh, probably, um, you know, in 88 when we were 6-5 and five, uh, and we had played the you know, played the Raiders and lost to them at home, and it was sad because there was always a rivalry there in the Bay Area. And then uh, we kind of turned it around, and so that stood out because we we beat the Redskins on Monday Night Football, and then we played the Chargers down uh, down in San Diego. Uh, I ended up blowing out my knee in that game, and 
having an ACL repair right after that. So I missed the whole rest of the season. Yes, but sir. That transition right there was was the transition that the whole team just decided to make basically at a meeting. You know, we met and said, "Hey, we got to we got to do this on our own and get to." You know, it wasn't a coaching thing because the coaches were we had good, great coaching. You know, we just turned it around and, and started uh, ramping up and beating everybody. You know, and uh, we won every game uh, on forward and you know played the Bengals and uh, had that drive at the end where. Uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, Joe and, uh, and John Taylor is in the end zone at the end there. And, Definitely, uh, man. It was, a, it was an awesome moment, man. Definitely, yeah. man. So, as an offensive lineman, man, what preparation did you take as a player to be ready on game day? Oh, uh, lifting weights, you know, uh, weightlifting early in the week. Um, we, uh, we didn't really do a whole lot of hitting. In uh, up at the it, with the Forty ers I mean, it was a, it was probably the way it would have been nicer if we would have had it like that at SC. You know, USC we just smashed heads all the time, and I, I was pretty beat up by the time I was to the NFL. You know, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just um, I don't know. Uh, I, I think preparation, the way we were prepared, was awesome because uh, Coach Walsh and. Um, of course, McKittrick, our offensive line coach, had had that thing down where, you know, they wouldn't uh, wear us out during the week, but uh, we knew exactly what we needed to do on game day uh, in every situation that we'd see on, in, in a defense. So, uh, the, you know, the... You know, I mean, when you get to the NFL, you pretty much know the technical part of it, and we did some of that with, with hitting sleds and you know, uh, technique and all, but uh, for the most part, it was all, um, you know, uh, film study and getting prepared for exactly what we're going to look at as far as the defense, you know. Definitely, man. So, uh, yeah. throughout your NFL journey, man, who had the most impact on you as a player when you went to the NFL? Like some of the players that are that were around you, who had the most impact on you? You mean the guys that I played well? I, I think, um, you know, Bubba Paris, he played at Michigan, who I, I had already met him. I, I was recruited by Bo Sandbecker, man, and, uh, as a nose tackle, you know. And, yes, and then, you know, I obviously moved over to offensive line when I got to SC, but I, I met Bubba. He came and spoke to the recruits on a, in a morning breakfast uh, Saturday, like this Sunday, I think, before we flew out. And uh, then I met him, you know, and then he was, he was a left tackle for us in the Niners. And he was a pretty good good guy, you know, and, and uh, you know, family family guy. And, uh, uh, had, you know, had, had it together. He always had some weight problems. And Walsh would, Walsh would get on his ass about it, you know. And it was just yeah. crazy. Uh, it was like, you got to lose 30 pounds. And yeah. that, you know, and just, Bubba would just keep eating, man. But he, he was a good good tackle. And, uh, you know, at guard, I think Guy McIntyre and, um, you know, uh, we had some, we had some good players. And then, then on defense, Kevin Fagan, he, he was, uh, I played against him in practice all the time, you know, because he was, he was a, the right end, you know, or inside three technique guy on the, uh, on the guard. And, uh, you know, playing against him all the time prepared me for the game because he was so quick and, uh, the, the guy bench pressed like he could bench press 500 pounds like four times, man. It was crazy. He was, he was strong. And he only weighed 265, 270, you know. <laughs> he ran in what, probably 465 or 46, you know, in the 40. And he had, had his knee, his knee had already been, you know, basically banged up and replaced. And Definitely. he had all kinds of injuries and stuff in Miami. But yet he was still running really fast and strong as heck, man. And so he was a tough uh, opponent, you know, in practice. So it, it got me prepared for sure. Definitely, man. So and uh, how the league is going now? This is going transitioning into a new topic, man. How the league is going? Uh -huh. Do you think Kansas City made the right choice in giving Patrick Mahomes nearly? Five hundred and ten. Five hundred million. Yeah, yeah I, I read that. Uh, 
Well, it's a long-term contract, you know, and they, I don't know how much of it's guaranteed. Uh, I didn't read that much about the contract, but, but it was it was for 10 years, you yeah. know, and Plus, I'm not sure how old Patrick how old is Patrick Mahomes? Do you know? I think I mean, he's about, he's about to turn twenty four, I believe. But he's got that okay, two, so he's still pretty young. Two extra um, years yeah. on his rookie contract, too. Right. Um, I, I, you know, I think it was a good move for them. You know, he he played well. Uh, and they, they he pretty much picked the Forty Nineers apart. basically because uh, well, I, I don't I don't want to downgrade anybody, but. You know, Richard Sherman got burned a couple times on, on man coverage. And uh, so the 49ers got into cover two and cover three situations where they had to do play zone. And at that point, they got picked apart. You know, and Patrick Mahomes did a really good job of doing that. And, and their receivers did well. And uh, so he just, I, I think he deserves every uh, every penny he's going to earn, you know. Um, if, if I were him, though, I, I think I would have signed – Maybe a shorter term contract for a little bit less, and then given well, I don't know because that money's it just depends on how much is guaranteed and all that. And it, it you know they're all different. Every contract's different, so definitely. And I'm not sure. I didn't really read about exactly the way it went down. I but. think uh, what's guaranteed of it is like 140 million. Ooh, man, that, that, that's wow. a lot of lot of money. I think it's like yeah, an injury uh, injury guaranteed is what they're saying. But his how, how, how long are they going to pay? It? Are they going to pay it out out just over over his contract? Or I guess uh, that's a crazy amount guaranteed. of money. It's probably set up like an annuity somehow or something. You know, Definitely. who knows? Yeah, his but, when he when he turns thirty one, guess how much he's going to count against their cap. Uh, how much? Sixty million dollars. <sighs> that's Whoa. that's more like so like fifty at least over fifty percent of their cap is going to be in one player. Yeah, see, see that now that, that you see that part of it, I I don't understand as much, but I get it because it's going to count against the team as far as who they can hire and what they can bring on. So they've got a liability there. They may have to buy out his contract at some point just to get it, get other guys uh, get the cap down. Or, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not really sure how how it all works, but. Uh, I know the cap is big. That's a lot of money, and if if, he's, if that if that much money goes against the cap, then then the, the other players that they can pay are, are going to be less valuable. You know what I mean? Definitely, he's going to be a, surrounded cool. with low talent, low level talent. Yeah, for sure. yeah, that's the thing. I mean, with the, with that that big of a cap mar- a margin. Uh, uh, the other players will be, you know, they can only get what they can afford, you know. Definitely. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of insane, yeah, that when you think of it that way, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> for sure. It's crazy. So, uh, my last my yeah. last question for you, Mr. Briegel. The, the, sure. The trials and tribulations of football, the lessons that you've learned through all of it, have you applied those things to your personal life? <laughs> oh, you betcha. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had. Uh, well, we had a lot of fun partying in, in, uh, during the um, those days as well, and uh, I've taken some hits, man. I, uh, you know, um, I, uh, it, you know, the some DUI stuff and some problems with, um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I pretty much don't drink anymore. You know, I stopped doing all that, but. Uh, I've had issues with uh, with the DUIs and you know a little bit of the substance abuse here and there, but uh, I, I, I'm not doing that anymore, man. I just don't, you know, if you, if you don't break the law, you don't go to jail, you know. So um, pretty much stopped all that. But uh, for a while there, you know, I, I kind of self medicated because I hurt my spine and I had a back injury that kind of ended it all pretty much. I had my spine fused at L4, L5 after my third season. And, uh, you know, I kind of, uh, for a while, I was just, just, just out there doing, you know, just, just depressed about the whole thing, you know, and, uh, 
how it ended. And uh, yeah, I put it into all that, started getting motivated. Yes, sir. You know, uh, just don't do that anymore. So yes, sir. That's that's how it goes, man. It's, it's, you gotta keep keep us. Uh, Keep your ducks in order and do the right thing. Definitely. You know? Would you say God got you through those the that was depression? Yeah, the, oh. those times. Yeah, I, if I could, if I told you exactly what 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 happened in numerous events uh, and and how I came out of it, uh, God definitely got me through the, those uh, those times. I mean, I've had uh, I had I rolled my car a couple times and. Uh, I had a Harley Davidson. I crashed. Um, I had been drinking, you know, and uh, nobody ended up, you know, uh, getting hurt, and and, and I, I survived. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was, it's uh, there. Those are some intense moments that I don't really like to talk about, but I don't mind talking about it if it can help somebody you know, get through some tough times. And you know. You know, maybe by just me saying this, it's like uh, through to the help help of through God's help. Uh, you know, I, I, that's what got me through it. I think you know, because I've always been connected to Him. You know, definitely, man. I mean, um, yeah, my mom and dad have gone. My my mom passed away a couple of years ago. It was crazy. She had like a brain hemorrhage, and uh, you know, was, but uh, so I, 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 you know, I keep a conscious contact with God, man, and. and, and the Lord, and I think about her every day, you know, when I pray. So. Definitely, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we welcome you back for another episode of Sports Talk. Let's go. Thanks again, and God bless.